you are the fifth person now, including, let's see here, Dr. Aubrey de Grey, um, Dr. Robert Ajemian, Dr. Kirill Piatkevich, uh, Dr. and Jonathan Keats, and now Dr. Rupert Sheldrake. Um, I'm trying to keep a list of these people because you guys are the only people that I know that do not own cell phones. And <laughs> what, what you have, you have said, well, I'll, I'll say what, you know, Aubrey de Grey has called it the ultimate destroyer of personal solitude. You have said, I do not want to be interrupted all the time. And for example, with me, this device has been off now for quite a long period of time so that I can finish this project. And it's going to be off so that I can continue finishing this project. So will you please briefly speak to especially the millennial and generation Z that is now using the devices nonstop. We use them 150 times a day. Um, will you speak to the importance and Cal Newport talks a lot about the idea of deep work. And we've been talking about this for so long, but just the, the focus Focus, and neurobiologists are talking about it now, the importance of that focus for achieving big goals in your life. Will you just briefly mention, um, talk about that for a moment? Well, yes. I mean, cell phones are obviously highly convenient and they're essential for many people's work life. And, and so they obviously have their uses. Um, uh, but they can easily become a means of constant distraction. And the whole point of um, deeper work is being able to focus and concentrate and constant distraction of drip feed of news and social trivia on Facebook and other social media and so um, it is just ultimately distracting and so I think that one, one of the things I suggest actually in ways to go beyond uh, I have a chapter there on the importance of holy days and festivals um, and it was always a tradition and I mean, in, the Jude, in the Judaic tradition, having the Sabbath, a day when you don't work. The whole point of the Sabbath is that you, it's a day, it's a holy day. A, a holy day is a holiday, it's the same word. Yeah. Uh, you, you, it's a holy day because you don't work. And then the purpose of it is to give thanks to God, to make love, to be with your family, to play music, to have fun. And then, then for Christians, it's Sunday. For Muslims, it's Friday. But this, I, this pattern of a Sabbath, a day in the week when you have, we now have a weekend, two days. But the trouble is these have now got engulfed by 24-7 culture. So shopping malls are open, or at least they were until the COVID lockdowns. And, uh, you know, have constant Amazon deliveries, online shopping 24-7. Um, this has completely abolished this necessary time it's part of human nature to have time off together and for people who are forced to work on sundays because they work in a shop in a shopping mall for example uh, then the employer says oh you can have tuesday off instead that's not the point because everyone else is working on tuesday it's it's being together being alone all together as one wishes to have a time away from all this work life and the, the workaholic culture, which America has spread to the rest of the world with <laughs> <24 seven> <laughs> <laughs> procedures. Uh, I mean, America is the place where it's worst. I think workaholism um, is, uh, really does need something doing about it for our own sanity. And so I think that the minimum thing I'd suggest is having a, a technological Sabbath. I mean, ideally on if you're Jewish on Saturday, if you're Christian from a Christian background on Sunday, if you're Muslim background on Friday, um, but have a, have a day when you don't work, when you don't, when you do just have time to read books, listen, walk in nature, do some gardening, hang out with friends, make love, uh, play music, uh, you know, and and not be distracted the whole time. So I think that for people who need these devices for their work, who've become dependent on them for, for their earning a living, I mean, and many people have, um, obviously you can't just give them up. But having a technological Sabbath and actually ideally combining it with a real Sabbath, a real um, holy day, once a week, and then observing the festivals, I think it's very important to, and most people observe in America Thanksgiving and Christmas, um, but there are other festivals throughout the year which are important. I mean, for me, an important one is September the 29th, the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels, which is a time 
to become aware of all those forms of consciousness beyond the human level. And the ancients thought that every star and planet had its own intelligence, which was an angel. I mean, they weren't humanoid beings with wings. They were the intelligences of the celestial bodies. The whole heavens is full of intelligence in that worldview. And for me, the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels is a way to connect with all those forms of non-human intelligence beyond our own. The Feast of the Day of the Dead, um, November the 2nd, which is a very big deal in Mexico and in many Catholic countries, um, is the feast when we acknowledge and remember the ancestors, those who've gone before. November the 1st, All Saints Day, All Hallows Day, um, is when we remember the blessed dead, you know, the famous dead, and November the 2nd, everyone else. And for most people, they've just forgotten about these festivals. Instead, children remember the eve of these festivals, Halloween. Um, that's become a sort of orgy of dressing up as witches and, and, and eating candies and stuff. Um, but the festival itself has been hollowed out. And for me, again, November the 2nd is a day when I, I always go to a requiem mass uh, I remember my dead parents and ancestors, my dead friends, and all those I know and who will give thanks for, who've gone before. On November the 1st, I give thanks for all those who've been my teachers, who are now departed and who've influenced me. So I think having throughout the year, you see, there are these special days, the festivals, each with its own purpose, and they're holidays traditionally, um, so that there's time to give attention to these other things. So I think recovering a sense of sacred time yes. is very important. And switching off cell phones uh, when one's doing that is, is a very important part of it. So I would say that starting with special days, holy days and festivals, um, and then maybe extending it out further uh, to only having it on certain hours a day, uh, it would be a good way to go. It's not a good way to go to have one's entire life engulfed by 24-7 workaholic culture. So well said. These technological Sabbaths, also these rituals that have been passed on for so long to have, like you talk about, the brief moment before you dig into your dinner and with your family, just hold each other's hands and close your eyes and reflect on the beauty of the fact that you are sharing a meal. There's so many different ways. There's all these days that are celebratory days to just take a Sabbath away from technology and workaholism and just tune more inward and music, make love, um, uh, go play, be in nature, do art, um, this is so beautiful and I'm really happy that that you listed. I, I, it's going to be really important potentially even moving forward to do things like just have a have day have more days where we just say, okay, turn down the economic machinery today and turn up the spiritual machinery today. We're going to have to have more days like that in the future. That was beautifully said, Rupert. Thank you so much for coming on to the program and for uh, teaching us everything that you have today. This has been an honor and a pleasure. We're very grateful. Thank you. Oh, fun to be with you, Alan. Thank you.